Hi, everybody. This is Martin Patella, Life Enthusiast Podcast. And today I have with me Austin Sachs and Fuchsia, if I got the name right, Jang? Mm -hmm. Yes. And they're actually married. <laughs> and uh, Austin reached out to me after our publication of the uh, product that helps people remove gadolinium which is used as a contrast agent in uh, mm, some medical procedures, primarily uh, MRI. This is probably not going to be an easy story to tell, but it's well worth telling. And I'm going to uh, hand my baton over to Aston and Fushia. Here it goes. Thank you, Martin. Uh, just again, just to say uh, my full name, just so people know if they want to reference this court case in the 8th Judicial District Court of uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. My, my full name is Kimball, like the piano, Kimball Austin Sachs. Hi, Martin. My name is Cece, and my Chinese name is Yusha Zhang. Okay, my husband and I married 2016. We have a wonderful happy life before this case uh, four years ago and uh, this case broke our life um, we almost every day involved this case we have to do our best uh, finally we found you we are very happy to find some solution by your side thank you very much this all started in uh, January of 2019. And what had happened is I was uh, on the uh, East Coast uh, for some dental work. And oh, we were living just, you know, we were living in Boulder City, Nevada, just outside of where Hoover Dam is. And I was working for the Bureau of Reclamation as a buyer for goods and services for uh, the Hoover Dam, Parker Dam, and Davis Dam. And so, um, my wife gave me a call uh, that our son had uh, fallen to the ground and got dizzy and that she had notified uh, the paramedics in Boulder City. And they in turn picked up our son. And I need to back up by saying this is that what, what led to the, the paramedics uh, coming for our son is that uh, this Saturday evening uh, before this, this started is that my wife uh, gave our son uh, some Ling Ling chicken dumplings. And unbeknownst to my wife, those Ling Ling chicken dumplings included, say, like a hidden form of monosodium glutamate and also canola oil. And so uh, he had a fever that night. And then uh, the next day, like I said, he, he woke up. He was not feeling well. He only had water. And then uh, he, he, uh, he fell to the ground. He was unconscious for a little period of time. And my wife was, uh, uh, you know, obviously concerned. And so she called for help. And then... So how old was he at that time? Eight years old. Yeah. Yes, eight years old. And so they took him to uh, St. Rose Siena in Henderson, Nevada for a, a CAT scan. And they didn't find anything on the CAT scan. And they said, well, um, uh, we don't have a child neurologist. So he needs to go to uh, University uh, or uh, UMC Children's Hospital in, in Vegas. And so they transported him there. My wife went along in the, uh, the ambulance. And then that night, uh, they did a, a, a spinal tap. They thought he had uh, meningitis. And so that turned out negative. And then uh, the next day, the, the doctor, I believe it was a, a Dr. Fisher and a Dr. Hawthorne, that they somehow on their own accord, without ever doing a proper diagnosis, decided all on their own, and wrongly so, that uh, he was suffering from seizures. And then they started to load him up with anti-seizure chemicals that are very heavy duty chemicals that it really turns your, your child or any adult really into a chemical junkie overnight because you become very quickly uh, uh, addicted to these powerful psychoactive drugs. And it's devastating because in the case of my son, what happened is this happened on, uh, like I said, it, it started on a Saturday night. The next day, Sunday is when he passed out. Here it is Monday. They're giving him uh, heavy duty chemicals. I fly in the next day, Tuesday afternoon. And what do I see, Martin? I see what amounts to a lifeless boy laid in that bed. And I said, oh, my God, he wasn't like that before I left. What's going on here? 
And yeah. so I talked to Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Rachel Fisher. And she didn't like anything I had to say, Martin, as you can imagine. In other words, I said things like, look, um, you know, you're, you're going about this all the wrong way. In other words, you are trying to throw chemicals at this. And that's not going to help him. You're only treating his symptoms and he needs to be healed. So we want one of two things to happen here at this point. I said, I want him released to us or I want him released to a better hospital. So you know what she did, Martin? Just take a guess what she did. I wouldn't dare to guess. She called CPS. Child CPS. Protection Services, yes. Child Protection Services. In other words, she immediately pulled out the big guns and said, you parents have no rights. So... Uh, the next day I was dealing with CPS, uh, uh, this, 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 this guy from CPS shows up in the hospital room and I'm trying to educate him, Martin, but he doesn't want to hear any, anything of like common sense because what he is unbeknownst to him is he's a, a whore for big pharma. He is, he's a cheerleader for the doctors and the, the pharmaceutical, uh, medical mafia. So he couldn't care less the validity of what I'm saying that the boy needs to be healed with safe and natural effective remedies. Right. And so I made it known uh, when he was in the hospital that he needed to uh, uh, be detoxed and he needed to be released to us. And I right. also said, if you're going to do uh, an MRI, do not do it with contrast. And that was in the hospital records. And so, so you, you actually at that point, at that point, you're advised that they will want to do an MRI. And at that point, you're telling them only without the contrast agent, if you're going to do it. Yes, they had said we need, they said we need to do an EEG and we need to do an MRI because they already did the CAT scan. Yes. And so uh, just to let you know, they ne in that first course of treatment, they never did the EEG. And so... We had a, an attorney who represented us at the child court, the juvenile court. When she was looking through the medical record, she says, they never did an EEG during his first course of treatment. She said, that's medical malpractice. I said, yes, you're right. I agree with you. And so, in, in other words, Martin, how can you give a diagnosis, how can you give a child anesthesia uh, chemicals if you don't properly diagnose them first? In other words, what are their duties? They have a duty, they have an obligation yeah. to, to diagnose it properly first. Yeah. Austin, I, I sense this phenomenal level of frustration and agitation and frustration that you have had with all of this ongoing yes. situation. And yet, you know, like I'm totally an impartial, uninvolved. I mean, I, I empathize with you greatly, but at the same time, I'm watching it from the outside in. Right. And yes. I, I see this um, side from the hospital where we have people who have been educated in a particular specific way. They have been trained by the Rockefeller Carnegie style education of medicine. They only understand throwing drugs at things and they only understand um, I have to do something. They, they possibly are well-meaning people who just don't understand life. I mean, I would I would try to give them the benefit of the doubt. Most people who go to med schools, yeah, they, they go there with the uh, intention of healing or helping or whatever. What happens with them in the next seven years of schooling is another story. But they usually come there with some level of wanting to be helpful to others. I'm going to share something interesting with you, Martin. My sister-in-law is a rheumatologist. She came over from Russia and she got uh, a, like a second education here. And I went to her graduation. And at one point during this graduation ceremony, there was a guy who gave like a, 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 a PowerPoint presentation showing, you know, that the, the students going through the, the curriculum and, and, you know, arm in arm with each other and what they've been through. And this one guy said, and we're going to make a lot of money, ha, ha, ha. And we're going to make a lot of money, ha, ha, ha. And we're going to make a lot of money, ha, ha, ha. And it was like, it was like, it just struck me. It's like, I'm like, okay, well, that's that's obviously how some of them look at it. But just to address what you were saying, it is, and I said the very, it's coincidental, I said the very same thing to the, uh, the, the CPS guy. I said, this is Rockefeller medicine. I said, the, the, the problem is it has an Achilles heel. They're only, obviously... Uh, uh, treating the symptoms when they're not looking at the root causes and they don't they 
they they actually don't know how to heal anything. And so that's where somebody like I'm just going to mention this name. My wife and I met and did a video with Dr. Robert Morse in Port Charlotte, Florida, that has been a naturopathic doctor for over 30 years. Mm -hmm. And he has even healed uh, uh, people from being quadriplegic. So yeah. I would say that man knows what he's talking about. A doctor, that doctor knows what he's talking about. So mm -hmm. it's it's painful when you're, say, under the thumb of these, these individuals that completely disrespect the law because... What we're talking about here is a number of laws in the state of Nevada specifically to yeah. our case. And that is you have two right off the bat called informed consent. Well, what does informed consent mean to anybody of common sense? It means you're getting informed and you either consent or you don't consent. And it, it's yeah, not there we go. if you don't so consent. So th th what they did again by pulling out the big guns is they completely violated our civil rights immediately right off the bat. Yes. And so what happened at one point, Martin, is that... Um, uh, I, I couldn't hang around the hospital because I couldn't bear to witness what they were doing to my son. And so my wife kept an eye on him. And the uh, 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 now I, I'm stepdaddy, okay, because uh, my son was born in China by uh, her first husband. And oh. so obviously they got divorced. And so uh, the biological father flew over. And this was around Thursday of that week. And so when I picked him up from McCarran uh, Airport in Las Vegas, I told him, I said, Alex, I said, your number one goal is get him out of that hospital. They're murderers, okay? Flat out, they're murderers because they, they yeah. let, let's put it this way, Martin. I mean, let's be frank about this. If they kill a child, which happens all the time, every day in hospitals around the world, not, not only just the United States, they have what's called this thing called insurance. Do they lose sleep or do they feel bad that they've killed a child? I think the answer is a resounding no. They don't care. This is, they're running a for-profit business. And so- you have to, you ha I really think you have to look at it through very discerning eyes like that and say, you know what, they're running a business and don't you dare, meaning the parents, don't you dare interfere, uh, interfere with our profit model. We have drugs to prescribe and we get bonuses from prescribing those, those so-called chemicals. So do not interfere with our gravy train, Mr. Sachs. Oh, just, just to slow it down a bit, because, you know, you have the story in your cells, but uh, I'm trying to follow it as, as a, uh, first time viewer right and so what what we have here is that you are expressing that you want different service and they're telling you no you won't have it and you can't have it because i'm go i'm in control you're not you nailed it you nailed so, it so by what design are they in control as opposed to you Mm, well, the long and short of it is that they're, they're in violation of two NRS, Nevada, Nevada revised statute, NRSs. They're in complete violation of those as far as with respect to informed so, consent. Okay, so they have violated the statutes and uh, you can't do a damn thing about it? That's the interesting thing. Uh, if I mention like a famous attorney names like Jerry Spence or Melvin Belli or somebody, it's like, you need a high-powered attorney standing right next to you, and you're going to pay thousands and thousands of dollars for the retainer is to say you guys need to stop what you're doing because I I'm going to give a little sidebar here. I did contact the governor of Nevada. I contacted the CPS um, ombudsman. I contacted the uh, the sheriff of Clark County, Nevada. And now guess who, ha guess who helped us? Just take a guess. Guess who helped us? I, I couldn't begin to guess. None of them. None of them. See, what I'm <laughs> saying is people people in so-called positions of authority, they don't do their job. They are completely uh, irresponsible. That's that's the whole thing. That's why more and more people need to stand up for their, their parental rights and, and change what needs to happen, Martin. The laws need to change because there is no advocate for the parent when you're in a situation like this at all. Okay. And so, Austin, is the problem the law or is the problem that the law is not enforced? I would, I, I agree with you. It's, it's actually both the way I see it because there, there is another two laws which I need to mention specifically, which build our case, as you're going to see, this has been an, an unbelievably egregious court case, is that there's an NRS 126.036, which says that uh, uh, parenting is a, a fundamental right and it's a liberty, liberty interest. That means they're basically sacred, God given rights. And so parents have the right to the care custody and management of their child right well if you if, if, if look look how it reads care custody and management well care obviously 
is like, you know, day-to-day -day care and management and, and all that. So once again, that was completely uh, disregarded by the, the right. police, the police detective, CPS, the doctor. So once again, they are violating the law egregiously. And then you have an NRS 200.5085 which give which give parents the right the, the right to non medical remedial care. So the way the statute reads is something like this: um, the parents cannot be uh, found guilty or or uh, violating uh, the statute of being um, uh, neglectful or abuseful if they're seeking out non medical remedial care and that care is sought out in good faith and it's recognized and permitted by the state of Nevada. Well, well, we are going to see a little bit later on in this this this, right. this story what how that ties in with what we actually did. Did uh, did you end up adopting him or no? No, not official. And I'll tell you why. Because the more you stick your nose in this 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 what's called the legal system, yeah. the more you're contracting with them. And and I don't want to contract with them basically at all because they have they have shown what they that they are. They're fraudulent. They never give you full disclosure and they always try to take advantage of you and dupe you every step of the way. So I, I wanted to avoid all that nonsense because what really matters is what's in the heart, right? What do I do to take care of the boy on a daily basis and, and his mother? So right. the, uh, uh, what happened then is that uh, uh, I left and then uh, my wife uh, uh, left and, and the biological father stayed with him that night. And then Saturday morning, uh, my wife left early, uh, went to the hospital. So the doctor walks in and tells my wife and the biological father, good news, we can discharge him today if, if he has an MRI with contrast. And so what did he do just by using that language? He made them an unethical offer because there was no, there was no medical reason for him to have the contrast. You couldn't justify knowing that the dangers of gadolinium have and that's even in the uh, uh, what's called the contraindications and warnings from the manufacturer themselves. In this case, it's Bayer Pharmaceuticals because they make this product called Gadovitz. And yeah. so obviously it contains gadolinium. And they tell you right in the warning, it says that, that gadolinium will stay in the body for months and years. And so this doctor obviously uh, uh, did not give my wife and the uh, biological father full disclosure. So they gave him the, uh, the, the, the MRI with the contrast. Now you fast forward to about um, like six o'clock that evening. My wife calls and says, um, come pick us up. We've been discharged. He's been discharged. Okay. And so I come into the hospital room and once again, it, it's, it's like even worse. He's, he, he looks even worse than when I came in that Tuesday afternoon uh, earlier in the week. Oh, he's not I, because, limp and uh, not responsive or. Oh, he, he looked like an autistic basket case that was frothing at the mouth. Okay. And so. I picked him up and he urinated on me. Okay. He urinated on me immediately. I said to myself, wow. I said, I, I know what I'm dealing with here now. They poisoned him with the gadolinium or the, 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 the MRI contrast dye. And then they're lying that, that, you know, he's in a releasable condition. But this is what I said to myself is I said, I love this boy more than I care about my own fate. What I want to do is I want to save this boy because if this boy stays in this hospital, they will kill him. That was my belief. And I still believe that to this day. Mm. And so I knew I was ro ro uh, uh, rolling the dice. And I said, the heck with it. I'm taking them out of here immediately because I, I can I can do a much better job than what they're doing because, once again, they don't know how to heal. They only know how to treat symptoms. That's pure insanity from a, a sane and rational, uh, prudent person standpoint. And so we got him home. We got him started on kind of like a uh, uh, like a, a fruit detox that you that Dr. Morris, Dr. Robert Morris would recommend because right. fruits, berries, and melons have the highest uh, healing powers of all the food groups there is, and so um, we also gave him uh, uh, you know plenty of water, and then uh, uh, the next day Sunday we tried to get him out in the sunshine, get him walk in, and then that next that next that, the next day that Monday we drove to um, Cottonwood, Arizona to take him to uh, uh, Dr. Patrick Flanagan's office uh, right by the, uh, the airport in Cottonwood because he sells two products that you may or may not be aware of. One is called Mega Hydrate and the other one's called Crystal Energy, right? And yeah, so- we actually, we actually sell Flanagan's products on our, on our site. Okay, so excellent. So you know, you know, and you can explain to the viewers, say how beneficial those are. Well, I want to say this, uh, Martin, I want to say this. My, my brother and I, we interviewed Dr. Flanagan at his own office on, on a prior occasion there. We did interview him. And mm -hmm. I met him prior to that at a, uh, like a, one of these, uh, you know, group seminars. And so, um, 
Yeah. I mean, I know that he was the real McCoy, and I'm so yeah, sorry. Side, that he sidebar, yeah, sidebar here. Flanagan was one of the people who understood the uh, difficulty of the system, and he mm -hmm. tried to help people to live free from the oppression, and he was pursued for it relentlessly. And um, yeah, he suffered a good deal. Yeah. And so the, the, this is the uh, difficult bit here is that it has come to this, right? It should never have come Thank you. to this. Thank you. Okay, so we should, we should try and actually describe it to people now because um, we need to, you know, like, uh, yeah, you're, you're in the picture, but we're not. So how long ago is all this? Well, again, this all happened this four years in, uh, ago, right? Jan yeah, January 2019. So no, it's um, four years ago now. And yes. the boy is now 12 years old. Yes. Yes. And how is he? Right now, uh, he is doing much better. Here's what happened is in juvenile court is that they took away our parental rights. They put him in a uh, halfway house first after he was discharged. See, I got I got to back Oops, up. Because excuse me. Excuse me. So this medical system has actually sent the attack dogs on you and removed the child from your custody. Yeah, but what I'm saying is if, if I if I can complete the chronology, you'll understand the whole picture. All right. And so just, to, just to back up where we left off is that um, we we continued to uh, uh, heal him as best we could. We got him to make a hydrate, the crystal energy. We got him some CBD oil. Um, we got him Dr. Robert Morse's uh, liquid herbal botanicals because I consulted them all on the phone. And they yep. said he needs about eight of those. And so we got those sent to us overnight. And then we went to see a, a Dr. Goez. Uh, Hazel Goez and uh, a Dr. Uh, Terry Fowl of Renaissance Health Center in uh, uh, basically what amounts to uh, West Las Vegas. They have he Dr. Terry Fowl owns a uh, uh, Renaissance Health Center, and so they're like naturopathic kind of care. And so he started the Myers Cocktail IV at my request. And uh, uh, this is the amazing thing: is that after the MRI, after the Myers Cocktail IV, just one. He started walking again on his own. In other words, he came back to life. Right on. Okay. Right. So I knew I was on the right track. And I knew because I've studied natural health and healing for years and years and years to include, uh, uh, say, one of my most important mentors is Dr. Robert Morris. And so, um, you know, I knew we were on the right track. And so uh, uh, we left. And then the next day was a Saturday. And we wanted another Myers cocktail for him. So we contacted Dr. Goez and she said, look, you know, Office is closed on weekends. Oh, and before we left that office, I made a follow-up appointment with them on that Friday. I made a follow-up appointment for that Monday that he would get a, 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 a an ozone 10 pass therapy. Now, you know how good ozone 10 pass is, right? No, of course. Right. So uh, in other words, we were already scheduled for that. In other words, the, the main theme that I want to get across to the, the viewers is everything we did as parents was safe and effective. And everything that the Western hospital wanted to do was dangerous with side effects and life-threatening side effects at that. And so... Um, well, the, the point being is that uh, as you define the statute, as long as you're providing care, mm -hmm. you have every right to do so. Yes. And so you were, you were indeed providing care and showing the evidence that you are going to continue to provide care. And, and here comes the explosion, right? Well, the explosion is coming up. And so because Dr. Goez, uh, 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 their office couldn't give us the Myers cocktail that Saturday, she recommended uh, what she what she turned their own words. She said, you can go to a, 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 a hangover clinic on the Las Vegas Strip and they can give him our Myers cocktail. So I contacted a number of them and one of them agreed because of our son's age. They said, yes, we'll provide service. We drove 45 minutes to this, this IV clinic. And then when we get there, you, you basically have these two guys saying, no, we're not going to give him service. He needs to go to a hospital. I'm like, you guys don't listen, do you? I said, it's the hospital that did this to him. So why are we going to take him back to a children's hospital? And number two, we're already under the care of a naturopathic doctor. And we got the Myers cocktail the day before, which which uh, resulted in, in, in wonderful results. And so it's like, Martin, it's like you're talking to people like we're absolutely just retarded. I don't mean to sound come across as harsh, but... These people are retarded. They're retarded. I'm sorry. Well, so, they have been they have been programmed to think in a particular way. 
Right. I mean, if you really think of it, the whole system is designed this way. The education of the doctors is run in a particular way, and the education of the populace people in general is run <laughs> with that same perspective. I mean, this is the Rockefeller, Carnegie, medicine owning the universities and the doctors and the prescription pad, and then also owning the media, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. they will, of course, well, now you're you're showing the example that these people, the attendants in there are saying, no, we won't, and uh, you should go back into the system. Yes, exactly right. And so what happened is the, the one technician, uh, he called CPS the next day, and CPS showed up at our condo in Boulder City on a Sunday night, just before midnight, like thieves in the night. They banged on the door, and um, I opened up the screen door where they actually couldn't get in at that point. I said, look, there were two, there were two Boulder City police officers and two CPS uh, uh, people. Mm -hmm. And so I said to them, I said, look, we are under the care of a naturopathic doctor. We don't want your help. We don't need your help. We don't consent to anything you're doing or want with us. And then the officer at that point says, open the door now. And I'm like, hmm, what am I going to do now, right? I mean, I'm not Superman. Believe me, if I was Superman, I would have taken care of him. But I'm yeah, not, I'm saying, I don't have, I don't have extra special power. So I'm like, okay, fine. So I open up the door and they they come in. And then uh, our, our son is laying on a $3,000 plus German-made MRS-2000. It is a, a pulse electromagnetic frequency body map, right? And it's right. oxidizing his cells. And they lied and said, oh, he's laying on the floor. It's like, once again, they don't pay attention to detail. They don't care about the truth. They're just clueless wonders and love being clueless wonders. They just love it. So anyway, um, uh, they said, uh, uh, this, this, is, this is what the CPS woman says, Melinda Paselli. And she is, she is uh, completely lawless like the rest of them. And then you had her, her little cohort, Allison Spencer, completely two lawless individuals. And so uh, uh, Melinda well, Paselli feel says... They feel entitled and empowered to rescue the child from the irresponsible parent. They are rescuing the child. Remember, their mindset is that you are threatening the existence of your child and they are rescuing him. Right. And so they don't they don't listen to when the parent says it's the hospital that did this, that the way you see this boy right now. So once again, it falls on deaf ears, but she made, once again, like, uh, uh, like the doctor, she made, she made what's called an offer. Um, your son can either go to Sunrise Hospital or he can go back to UMC. And my wife says, um, he can go, he can go to Sunrise. And I chimed in. I said, now, wait a minute. I said, we're the parents here. We decide the fate of our child. I said, I don't even want him going to Sunrise. I want him to go to Elite Medical Center. Why? Because Elite Medical Center out of the Las Vegas area has the highest ratings. And I called them on no less than three separate occasions to find out. I said, hey, I said, I have a son that's eight years old and um, he suffered from seizure-like symptoms. I said, will you accept him as a patient? Three times on three separate calls, they said yes. All right. Did they honor our request? Oh, oh, no, 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 no. See, they, they, do, they do whatever they want because... As you said, they 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 think that they're rescuing when they they're violating once again our parental civil rights, yeah. and so they are going. I, I can assure you, they're going to be held accountable. I'm not tolerating this at all. I'm not going to tolerate it. So, in other words, that's battle down the road. But I'm I'm putting that out there. I'm, I'm putting the intention out there in the universe. We are going to get help from somewhere, some some shape or form, is to put these people back in their place because they are out of control. And they don't follow the rule of law. It's like they are lawless. And it's like, I don't care that, you know, they, that they're saying they're going to rescue our son. I'm like, no, no, no. You follow the law because the Supreme Court says is that the parents know more about the child than the child does. And that's why parental rights are more important. And it makes sense. And so we we have nothing but a good faith record. We have documented receipts of over uh, $1,100 of what we did to help our son. And so uh, uh, what they did then is uh, Melinda Paselli, uh, after the, their little more questioning back and forth, is she said, um, I'm taking custody of your child, and he's going back to UMC. We're like, well, wait a minute. You just lied. You said you agreed to take him to Sunrise. And she said, I have custody of the child, and he's going back to UMC. And we're like, great. You're taking him back to the same place that turned him into an autistic basket case. Aren't you just special? Did you, you, just did special? you speak those words to her? 
Pretty much, yes. Yes, I pretty much did. I made that known. In other words, I was very and I have I have I have those videos. And I'll tell you, there's a story behind those body cam video sidebar. Tell you right oh, now. so these people came actually with body cam videos. The police did. The Boulder City Police did. Okay. And so, and so a sidebar on this because it, since we're on, I do want to mention this. And so, when we hired the first set of attorneys, I told him, I said, "Look, we are going to need those body cam videos from that night. Why? Because I already, I already consulted with a civil rights attorney. He says if you're going to win your civil rights case against the Boulder City Police and CPS, he says you're going to need those videos." And so I pressed him and I pressed him and I pressed him. Long story short, the district attorney retaliated against my wife and I, and she indicted us with a grand jury instead of letting, instead of letting this go to the, um, uh, the preliminary hearing at the justice court level, and that she finally did surrender those body cam videos, and I have them, and it's part of the, the evidence. But what I'm saying is I paid a very high price to get those videos, but I'm like, you know, uh, this is this is how this is how lawless public officials operate when they violate their oath. They violate the rule of law. All of this is easy de demonstrable, but that's another. We'll, we'll come back to that. But in any case, um, so what happened then is they took them back to UMC. They had them for about three weeks. It took them nine days to come up with a diagnosis of encephalitis. He couldn't have had encephalitis uh, in the time that that he left. What I'm saying is. He had to have gotten encephalitis in the time he was at that hospital sure. because you can't let nine days go by. And that was ridiculous in and of itself to take nine days to diagnose him. And so they kept, they re-chemicalize re him back to life with prednisone. He goes to a halfway house. We lose our battle in juvenile court. We lose custody. He goes to a halfway house. He goes to a foster home. Um, uh, not long after that, like in the beginning of April, I'm at work. I'm at work. And these two police detectives come in and they say, we need to talk to you. And so we go in a separate room and they say, we're going to arrest you uh, uh, for child neglect and abuse. I says, whoa, I says, I've already been through this with juvenile court. They said, that's a separate matter. And I said, I don't agree. This. I don't consent to this. And they said, um, well, you have to walk outside now. They put me in handcuffs right in front of my building where I work. How embarrassing. Yeah. And then they walk me right in front of the headquarters building for the Bureau of Reclamation. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, they take me, and I asked them too. I said, "Will you please put the handcuffs uh, uh, on the front?" Because he had me like this to the back. Of course, he he's completely uh, 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 mean spirited, and, and yeah. wouldn't even accommodate a simple request like that. So we get there, and uh, I'm in that that uh, what's called the CCDC Clark County Detention Center for a whopping 30 hours, and half the time I'm in shackles. Which the other guys, the other guys, interesting because some of them were like repeat offenders, and they said. I've never been in shackles this long. He says, we don't know what's going on with this. He says, as soon as they put us in this room, the cell room, we should have been out of the shackle. So I'm like, I'm like, mm -hmm, yeah, par for the course. And then if you try to make a call, Martin, you had to smash your ear up to the phone, could barely see, barely hear what anybody's saying. And it's noisy in the room. What I'm saying is the whole experience is degrading. It is absolutely beyond degrading. And it infuriates anybody who is a reasonable and sane person of how criminal this system really is. And what they can get away with because they're the goons with the gun, so to speak. But, you know, there is there is some remedy after the fact that I'm going to be pursuing that. But I just want to say that my wife bailed me out. And then what happened is uh, she got arrested. They arrest. Like I said, she went into the, the for about the same amount of time, 30 hours, which is criminal because I posted her bail immediately. But they kept her in 30 hours. Mm -hmm. And then I get her. And then I. Uh, um, and then we hired attorneys. And, and these are not just any attorneys, Martin. Have you ever heard the name O.J. Simpson? Oh, yeah. Right. He's the famous football player, right? Well, he was represented a guy named Gabriel Grasso and his son, Christopher Grasso. I hired the father and my wife hired the son, okay? Mm. And so at the justice court level, they basically did nothing. And they were basically basically subservient to the judge, Victor Miller, that they they basically uh, conned us into turning in our passports because we were such bad criminals, don't you know? We might represent a flight risk. And so I, I should have stood up and said right there, no, I don't consent to that, blah, blah, blah. But I don't ha I didn't have the legal knowledge that I have now. So I would have handled this totally different. I never would have hired them. But what they did, here's what they did that is unforgivable. And Gabriel Grasso and Christopher Grasso, if you're listening, I want the whole world to hear this. This is what I especially want the whole world to hear. You men are unforgivable, 
you're unforgivable because what they did, Martin, is they did not give us the state's notice of the uh, the state's intent to indict. Now, they got that notice a full month before we were indicted. And they knew we were going to be indicted. They never told us, by the way, Austin and CC, you are going to be indicted and you have a right to be at the grand jury to testify on your own behalf. Did we ever get that opportunity? No. Is that against the law? Yes, it is against the law. How do you hold him accountable? Good luck, because it's an old boys, it's an old boys club, right? Are and you so, suggesting that these uh, lawyers have uh, acted willfully against your interest? Of course they have. They're, they're, there's no question that they have, because they could have called us. They could have emailed us. They could have uh, 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 they could have texted us. There is no excuse, because... The, uh, uh, do, you uh, think the it was, do you think it was negligent or do you think it was actually? Um, no, it was intentional. It was intentional because because they had an axe to grind with me after I had a very loud conversation with uh, Mr. Grasso's son, Christopher Grasso. I basically Christopher uh, Grasso told my wife at one point, you're facing very serious charges. And I lost it, Martin, at that point. I'm like, I'm thinking. Are you some kind of idiot? You're supposed to be our defense attorney and you're supposed to give us peace of mind that you actually know how to properly provide a proper defense and help us. What is not that why we're paying you massive big bucks? Now, would you be upset? You're paying these, these guys massive, a king's ransom, a king's yeah. ransom. And what did they do? They backstabbed us and they worked in cahoots with the, uh, the DA because what they agreed behind back doors is they said, screw Mr. Saxon, his wife. We won't give him notice to the, uh, 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 to the uh, grand jury and you, the DA, you'll have a field day. You'll have, you'll have, it's going to be so easy for you to indict these parents because no, the jur the grand jurors are never going to hear the other side of the story. And that's precisely what happened. Okay. And so we were indicted and then uh, we fired those two. And then we hired two other attorneys, uh, James Smith and Mitchell Posen. And so uh, uh, they were hired to write the writ of habeas corpus for us. Now, Mitchell Posen was the author of the writ of habeas corpus. He did in my mind, he did a decent job. However, many months later, when we got to the uh, uh, the hearing, um, it was oh, I want to back up one thing before I, before I say about that hearing, Mart. I want I want you to know the level that I've taken this, okay? Because I'm no dummy. I graduated with high GPAs from college. I I I am um, I consider myself a fairly intelligent man, well read, and I've met some of the smartest people on this planet on my own dime because I do want to know what's going on. I do want to know what the truth is, and so I wrote an 18 page joint declaration that laid out everything that happened in the hospital and why it was wrong and how uh, there was a clear connection between gadolinium and the cachexia that our son was suffering from, which is a wasting away of the body, the uh, encephalopathy, which is an inflammation of the brain, and his weight loss and stiff stiffness of joints and muscles. So I included no less than three peer-reviewed medical journal articles that made that connection between the gadolinium, the MRI contrast dye, and our son. Yeah, the medical and so, care and its outcomes. Yeah. Right. And so I didn't just take it, I didn't just take it to that level, Martin. I had 90 exhibits. 90. Okay, 90 exhibits. It was a 195 page document in total. Yeah. I gave that to James Smith to submit to the court, and apparently he did. And then he told me over the phone after reading the joint declaration, he says, he says, look, Austin, he said, I would expect Judge Hardy to say to Ms. Joby, um, Ms. Joby, is this the kind of case you really want to be bringing to this court? As in, Ms. Joby, are you are you out of your mind? Have you lost your marbles? That Mr. Sachs has clearly shown that they were acting in good faith and that there are reasonable explanations as to why this boy was damaged. And you want to go along with a frame job that was put forth by the police detective, Christopher Slack, who was completely unethical and incompetent to the nth degree because I did a 50-page, uh, a 55-page-plus affidavit of fact decimating his nine-page affidavit. I ripped him to shreds and made him look like the buffoon that he is. Because sad to say, I don't mean to offend these people, but when you're dealing with somebody else's life, uh, Detective Slack, you better have your act together. You better know what you're doing and you better follow the law. And so he completely violated his oath. He completely violated the law. And so did Ms. Michelle Joby, who's the district attorney who's now been replaced by Dina Renetti. And it doesn't look like they're, they're, 
as the one attorney put it to me, he says, in the DA's office, they're all the same birds of a feather. It's like, right, right. There's, in other words, you can't reason with these people. You cannot reason with them at all on any level at all. All they want to do is all make right. a deal and make their life easy. So, okay. Austin, while I fully appreciate the level of details you want to go into here, I don't know that, I, I think we can document it for the sake of documenting it, but I think we'll be losing a bunch of the uh, audience that's um, possibly interested in helping you because, you know, this piling on and more and more and more and more and more of detail is um, relevant, but not, not really changing the outcome. Okay, so to change gears, what I've learned in, and I've, I've studied law now in Nevada law, and I've been through, say, a lot of gurus, is that I did listen to Cal Washington, and I appreciate you mentioning him. I listened to him. I considered what he had to say, and what I would like to put forward to you and the viewers is, please interview KL. Um, that's the, say, the, the name or moniker he goes by. He was on a recent um, a podcast on Crow 777. It's 484. And so KL is talking about a, a remedy that has worked and will work. And so is that what it amounts to is this, is that the courts are basically set up like a trust. And so you have to clearly make it known that you are the beneficiary of the trust. So what that leaves is, is that leaves the, uh, 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 the, the most important part, the trustee is either the judge or the district attorney or prosecutor. And so they will, they, they will, as someone else put it, they'll, they'll try to uh, uh, bounce that hot potato between themselves, but really it falls on to the, um, the prosecutor that they are the trustee. When they are the trustee, they assume all the liabilities and debts and obligations of another. So that means they're the ones who have their checkbook in the court and they have to write a check to settle the account or they have to drop the charges. So in a nutshell, what I would encourage to, to bring this forward as far as the solution based on everything I've, and believe me, my knowledge of reading and, and, and dealing with say gurus is extensive, is that so far everything I've heard is KL has got the best solution. It's simple, it's elegant, it makes sense. What you're doing is you're challenging jurisdiction right off the bat, so you never let them get a foot in the door. You never let them get a foot in the door. Well, okay, so at this point you're in a tough spot, right? Because yeah, because we have because we have a show trial. We have a show trial scheduled for this August. And this oh, has yes. been pushed out. This has been pushed out repeatedly. And so the other thing that we've been fighting is my wife's defender does not want to hire a, a, a medical expert witness. Well, we've had we've had no less than seven, five lawyers and two legal gurus tell us you're going to need an expert medical witness to talk about the dangers of gadolinium. And so he, he, he told my wife over the phone, he says, I have the budget for a, uh, a public defender and I don't have to get anybody's permission. And he still doesn't want to get a public defender. So um, my wife filed a motion to have him uh, uh, dismissed. The judge, of course, because she doesn't follow the rule of law, she denied the motion. And then, and then my wife sent it in an objection to say, basically say, hey, look, this is why he's wrong in his testimony during the hearing and that you, the judge, are on record as not following the law and you're a liar as well. So you need to reconsider your decision, ma'am. Okay, so at this point, we're asking the public to, number one, pay attention. Number two, help a guy who's in a bit of a tough spot, right? Yes, and, and I would say along those lines, Martin, if, if the listeners could do one of two things or both, and it would be very much appreciated. The reason is, if you help us, it's going to help yourselves as parents because we are going to fight this. Say, as the expression goes, tooth and nail. I'm not. I'm not bowing down. I'm not bowing down before people that that don't follow the rule of law. So the two well, requests would be. Yeah, let's let's just be really clear here. Is the precedent of you losing is setting all of us up for a loss. Right. right. So we better win. Right. That's correct. We better help you win. Well, I'm going to say this too, Martin. I, I believe God is on our side. I, I really believe that in my heart and soul. So um, just to say to the, get the listeners is if you can please write, if you can please write to this uh, email address, it would be to uh, the district attorney. Her name again is Dina, D-I-N-A Renetti, R-I-N-E-T-T-I. The email to send it would be motions, the word motions, M-O-T-I-O-N-S, motions at Clark, 
C-L-A-R-K, Clark County, C-O-U-N-T-Y, D-A. So it's Clark County, D-A. It's motions at ClarkCountyDA.com. The idea behind the message would simply be to say for case number uh, C-19-343-5402, that's our case number, and you can look it up. It's a public record. You can look at all the filings we've done, which is unbelievably extensive, is that um, is to say to the, uh, the district attorney, say, you know, what you're doing is morally wrong. These parents have not violated the law. And I got to tell you, I, I got to back up what I'm saying. I want you to understand where I, I back up what I say. The reason I say what I do is because my current public defender, Ben Nadig, he has a um, he has a uh, an investigator that's part of his team. His name is Ken Hardy. Ken Hardy runs Silver State Investigations. Ken Hardy used to be a former Las Vegas police detective. He told me over the phone, he said, you did not commit any crimes. He said, this is more about like, like an agenda to like interfere with like parental parents and, and things like that. It's, it's, a, it's a fight over who has the ultimate right to the medical decisions to their child. And so again, to be, to be clear to the viewers, like if you could express something heartfelt like, you know, it is you you need to drop these charges. What you are doing is wrong. It's against God's will. It's against our will. We have we have fought and fought and fought. And it is it's going to uh, take away something that is sacred and God given, which is parental rights. These are God given in, 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 in parental rights are God given. The state of Nevada doesn't have a right to interfere. Besides, who is the state of Nevada? It's a fictitious legal entity that only exists in the minds of men and women. The other thing to say in the way of help is if the viewers want to help us monetarily, because my wife and I have spent over $40,000 of our own money. We've been wiped out financially because it's nonsense be between attorney's fees and travel expenses, because we now live in Arkansas is that if they could say, if they're interested in sending a PayPal donation and the email address for my, my wife's PayPal is a uh, C I C Y Z H A N g y u at gmail.com so it looks like cc zhang y u at gmail.com and so all i can say is is thank you thank you very much from 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 all of us my wife my son and i for giving us this opportunity this platform and to hopefully change the outcome of what's going on in this country because we already know if if, if parents don't stand up then what you're doing through your silent tacit acquiescence is you're saying everything that they're doing is okay yeah, I try to uh, make it more general rather than individual in this case, which is, number one, this gadolinium has caused ongoing long-term harm to your boy. Yes. You have been able to make some positive changes to it. Yes. Um, we should try and help you with doing more, right? You are now, you have custody of him now, right? Yeah, here's what happened to fill in that little empty uh, blank there is that um, in uh, it was, uh, uh, say, around July of 2020, the biological father took him back to China. And then um, he was there for about like just shy of two years. And then uh, we, we picked him up uh, like uh, was it last year and uh, or the year before. And we, we picked him up and we've had him ever since. He's been uh, homeschooled and we take him to a Christian uh, academy uh, that we're working with them as far as his education. Um, he's, he's doing quite well given all the setbacks because the, the any seizure medicines uh, had an impact on his, his cognition to a certain extent, but otherwise he's doing, he's doing pretty well. Um, we, we, we are still working with Dr. Morse and his staff and some other naturopathic doctors and, and um, uh, uh, acupuncturists. And so we're doing everything we can to keep him healthy and, and get him back on the road to uh, well. Yeah. So do you think that he will be ever able to live an independent life and hold a job? Or is that probably? No, I, I feel I feel very confident he will be able to do those things. Right. I feel very confident because we're working with some of the best people, say, including yourself and Dr. Morse, that, uh, you know, when you understand the fundamentals, the, uh, the, the body will heal itself. We just need, need to give it the right inputs. Right? right. And so if you follow God's plan that way, um, you can only meet with success. You have to. It, it, it's 
it, it's it's say it's God's divine plan. It, it just makes perfect sense. All right. So that's the f direction of your son's world. And as far as your world goes, if you lose this in August, mm -hmm. you get to be spending time behind the bars, right? No. What would happen is we would appeal it and we would obviously ask for uh, an appeal bond that lets us stay out while that's going on. But it may not get to that because we may move the, uh, the case to federal district court, possibly because the federal district court's a different set of eyes with a different set of rules that would look at it and maybe honor our constitutional rights because the way they look at us now, the way that court looks at us now is we're U.S. citizens and we have no rights, including constitutional rights or the Bill of Rights. That's the scam that's going on. That's why, again, I, I encourage you to get Kay on the show to make some of these points crystal clear to the viewers because we've all been duped. And the best way, the best remedy so far that I've seen, the most elegant remedy is to challenge jurisdiction and get the uh, uh, make it known that you're rebutting you're rebutting the presumption that uh, that you are the trustee of the trust. No, you're not the trustee. You're the beneficiary, and so you don't have the responsibilities. And that puts the the burden onto the trustee, which we say is, hey, it's the uh, the prosecutor, the district attorney. You're the trustee. You have to settle the account, or you have to drop the charges. And look at the word charges. Doesn't it doesn't it give it away the scam right there? You're being charged with a crime. It's like here's my charge card. Isn't this a financial transaction? This has nothing to do with legitimate governmental actions, right? All right, I I understand the complexities. I understand just how far in a person can get in into the minutia of all of this, and it's it's frightful and it's tragic and it's something that we need to be able to step out of we should never have reached this place uh, agreed but something i wanted to say with respect to your concern about the level of details is there's a famous expression the devil's in the details and so by by my giving a lot of these details it may set off a lot of uh, light bulb bells in people's minds like oh i didn't think of that or, or oh that's that's important you know what i'm saying is Hopefully it will help other people. I'm trying to help other people as well. I really don't want to see yep. any parents suffer and I don't want to see the kids suffer. It broke my heart when I saw my son laying there lifeless in the bed and I knew what they were doing wrong, which was everything. Yep. Uh, we will try and help you by direct personal contribution. We will try and help you by the uh, uh, correspondence with the, uh, the district attorney, a.k.a. Uh, prosecutor, Dina Renetti. Right. Yeah. We will try and create a, writing, a written campaign to her, mm -hmm. and we will see if we can lift the burden that's on your shoulders now. Thank you very much, Martin. Thank you. Okay. All right, Austin, uh, we will probably revisit this. Yes, I think you would be interested to see how this all wrapped up, too. Yeah. For now... This is Martin Patella for Life Enthusiast Podcast. Folks, Austin and his wife and his son are one of our clients, members, customers. We need to try and help them. You can find me at life-enthusiast.com. Thank you for listening today. <laughs>